the five. Devright Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devright Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about Devright Homes at www.devright.com.au. This is The Sattler Files. You're with The Sattler Files. My name is Murray Korf and joining me in the studio uh, is Jay Mangano from Devright Homes of Distinction. G'day, Jay. Hi, how are you today, You're, Murray? I'm well, thank you. Welcome along. Um, we're talking about today, we're going to talk about interior designers and whether or not you should get one or use one, should I say, perhaps. Yes, use one. I Yes, I'm all for it. Yeah. It's too much money to get it wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in... Most companies will have an interior designer that's um, mm. available. Mm. So unless you're really, really good at design and you know what you're doing, you should make use of the interior designer that's offered to you. Yeah. Um, because they're out shopping all the time, they know what's available, they know where to go to look for yeah, things. Yeah, that's the important um, thing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. You could spend all day out looking and not find mm. anything. They know they know where to go. Yes, because they're they're there, and people go to them with new products. Mm. Um, so if something new comes on the market, and they'll they'll take it to the interior designers, and they'll show them to make sure they know about it. Mm. Mm. And if you're just looking, you, yeah, you just you don't know where to go. You mm. don't know what's available. Um, and it's a lot of money to get it wrong. <laughs> it certainly so, is. You've got to do it twice, don't you? Yeah. And, well, there's things you can't do twice. Mm, you can't mess up your tiles. No. You can't, you know, painting your house again because it's a horrible it. colour is just not yes. in anyone's <laughs> no. <laughs> no, well, not idea in their, of fun. <laughs> no, or it, within their, uh, their finances either because, you know, you, it does cost a lot, as you pointed out. It costs a lot to rectify a problem, doesn't it? Yeah, and... You know, if you did your kitchen and it didn't look good, mm. you'd look at it every day. Yes, and you'd come in and, and you'd, you'd hate go, it, wouldn't you? What was I thinking? <laughs> and you don't want to live like that. Yeah, um, but look, and and the other the other side of it is, I mean, if you're building a home, the sort of home that Devright builds. Um, you really do want to make the most of that because you've got a premium product and you don't want to deface it by not having a a, a really competent interior designer working. Yeah, yeah. For you. Yeah, you yeah, you have to know the skills of the person you're working with. Yes. Yeah. That's that's always a problem. Mm. Um and and Jay the the other thing about it is that um the designer that you get really needs to understand what sort of a person you are. I mean, I, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But, <laughs> um, but you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. It's your personality, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. A good one should be able to pick up your personality. Mm. Um, some people are ultra conservative and want mm. ultra conservative. Mm. Um, the, and a good interior designer will know that just from mm. talking to them and checking to see what they want. Um, if... You're out there. I mean, that's probably up their alley. They'll go, yeah, it, oh, yes. beauty, I've got someone that's out there. I can do some yes, special things. of course. But they don't have to. They can do conservative if they need to mm -hmm. and because they need to fit the lifestyle of the person that they're working with. Mm. So, yeah, if, if you go there and they don't – and they're talking ultra modern, and you're not an ultra modern person, then you probably haven't got the right person for you. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you should count them all out. You no. should just look for one that works for you. Yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing that the designer has to do, it has to understand what your preferences are and what your personality is. But it, but whatever they design has to fit the skin of the house that they're doing it for, doesn't it? It, yeah, it does. So the, the, well, it's a bit of yeah. a balancing act. It's between yeah. the two things, the house design 
and what the client wants. A lot, a lot of interior designers will go from front fence to the back fence. You know, really? so they'll tell you fences if as a colour scheme. They could tell you particular plants they want in the garden. Mm. They probably won't go into your whole garden, mm. but they'll say we want some of these to tie mm. that colour into mm. the rest of the house. So. When you're going to your landscape person, you say, well, she, she wants some of these in it to tie it into the house. Right. Um, and as silly as that sounds, that's their colour schemes go from front to the back. Well, well look, I, I, I get that. Mm. And, you know, uh, I guess that there are, they also go the other way as well and tell you what they don't want. Of course, yes. That red letterbox <laughs> has to go. <laughs> yeah, or the front door, red front door. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, splashbacks are a thing that people are doing at the moment. They're liking loud, some li- loud splashbacks. Is that um, right? uh, yeah, look, I, my wife and I had a big discussion about the splashback we put in our house. So it's an individual thing, really, isn't it? Is. It is, yes, it is. But um, when you say loud splashbacks, you're talking about uh, block colours, you know, yeah, primary yeah. colour type things. Yeah, reds and blues and. Oh, yeah. goodness me. Yeah, after purple. a hard. Uh, uh, after a hard night, that'd be that'd be a bit dis- confronting to face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of them, there's a lot of mirror around. Um, the mirror, I can understand, yeah. but um, they they do um, tie it in with everything else, though, and that's the key, isn't it? Yes, it doesn't. It really does. It doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. No, it's all got to work. It's all got to mm. be together. Um, with our interior designer, we. <laughs> It's up to the client how much they want her involved. Mm. So if they th- they don't have to use her, if they don't want to, that's fine. And you're happy um, to work with their own designer if they want to put Yeah, if they've got their own. Yeah. Um, but then our designer, we could either – they can just give her a colour scheme. She can go and do it. Mm. So she'll have a meeting with them and say, yeah, what do you want? I want pinks. Mm. And she goes out and she comes mm. back and then – presents it all to them and they go, yeah, I like this or I don't like that and uh, mm. and and they work together. Or they can go out and do it themselves mm. and bring it back to her and say – and then sh- show it to the, her and say – and, and she, she would say, oh, well, I don't like this and have you thought mm. about that? Or mm. or they go out shopping together, mm. um, which is what a lot of people do because then you're, mm. you're seeing the same things, you're picking – Mm. While you're out shopping, you're you're already in the mood to pick everything. So yeah, yeah, as hard as that yeah. is sometimes for a a lowly male person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your wife would help you. <laughs> she would, um, and and of course, as you're saying, they do it from the front fence to the back fence if you want them to. But and and also that would also include things like uh, you know window treatments and. All of that sort of thing, and the whole lot blends together. Blends together, yeah. And I mean, they they will do everything. They'll do your taps and your basins and everything if you wanted them to. Really? Um, yeah, they don't have. Yeah, they can. They'll do the whole whole thing. Oh, okay. Um, but most people will pick their taps and basins themselves because yeah. I mean that's pretty easy. Mm. Um, but then they'll the, the interior designer will still have a say if yes something's. She'll she'll you've, come to you and gently say, "Look, if you've picked round taps and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and square showers, she'd probably say, well, do you think you could match <laughs> these yeah. up or something?' You know, yeah. So they've got to be uh, a bit of a diplomat as well, don't they? They do, they do. Mm. Yes, mm. but I mean, the, the the contribution they they would make to the overall finish of the house is just enormous, isn't it? It's oh, a difference huge. between. Something that everybody has an oh wow about, yeah. and, and those that say yeah, it's nice, but yeah, I've got a client at the moment that is building a house, and his parents are coming to live with them. Mm-hmm. So mum and dad have got a section downstairs, and they've got a section upstairs, and they were going to pick tiles, which was always going to be a bit mm-hmm. hairy because mm-hmm. we've got two generations; they obviously like different things mm-hmm. and different colours, and. Mm-hmm. So they made me go along, which is not something I usually do. <laughs> no. <laughs> they made me go along and they picked everything and um, then we got the interior designer in. Mm. Um, I said, well, you know, now we need to run it past the interior designer. We need to because – and, you know, as soon as she come in 
and put everything there in front of them and said, well, you've got two cream tiles. Why would we have two cream tiles? <laughs> you know, they're in different rooms, but really we should just have one cream tile. Mm. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. That's the eye of the professional, though. They yeah. see that stuff, you know, and I um, I probably wouldn't see that. It was, oh, it's cream, yes, yeah, same yeah. thing. But, I mean, it – and. But I would be able to pick the difference between that and something that it was coordinated properly by yeah. an, by a designer. Because uh, although it's a bit like art, isn't it? You know, mm. I know what I yeah. like, and if I see it, I'll I'd, I'd like it. Mm. And that's yeah. where the the designer has that all over those of us that pick things yeah. because they look nice. Yeah. Well, I think she changed. So she got rid of one tile. She changed the. Um, laminate on the bench top. She said, "You know, this colour goes really well with the with the wall tile, but it doesn't go so well with the floor tile. How about we go with this laminate, mm. which was the same, mm. just fraction colours or shades away, mm -hmm. but it just worked better with both tiles." So yeah. and they go, and once someone points it out to you, you can see it. Yes, of course it's, you can. Yeah. But when you're looking at it, you. You don't see it until someone says, "Hey, what about this?" <laughs> yeah, you don't see it. No, um, she she changed all their bench tops. Mm. Um, just got they're they're in the same range. They're mm. just a fraction different. Just a to slightly, what, slightly different palette to what yeah. they had, mm. and it just works so much mm. better. Yeah, and my clients rang the other day, and he goes. Oh gee, she's good, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but, strange that. <laughs> but but they see things like that, and that's that's where it's so important. Once again, I guess go back to this: if you're going to invest so much money in a home, a prestige mm. uh, home like that, you don't want it to um, not complement the the fine yeah. design of the house. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing that this house has got niches up the stairwell, so. This morning I said to my client, now you need to think about these lights in here. Mm. You you get seven watt ones and you get three lot watt ones. So one's a bright one that you would put over your vanity, one's a mood lighting. Mm. Which one are we going to put in your niches? Mm. Because it depends what you've got in your niches that you mm. want. Yeah, whether you Do want you to highlight it or mood light it. <laughs> yeah. And um, he goes, oh, I don't know. There's lots of things to think about that mm. the interior designer wouldn't even think about. She would just go, no, go this way because mm. this is what we're going to have in the niche, so we'll have it bright or we'll have it mood. Yes, you know, so. yeah. Mm. And then it all ties together and you see the finished product and you just know that you should have put yourself in their hands right from the, from the get-go. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's, it's just so much better to have it done professionally. Yeah. Yeah. And um, do – I mean, you say that they will, if you want them to, go from the front fence to the back fence and everything in between – is there any involvement with uh, councils when they start to do the front? I mean, obviously, you get a you get a an approval for the building uh, from the council, uh, 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 development authority, or whatever it is. Um, does the council or any council have any say in things like uh, you must have tin roofs or you can't paint it uh, <laughs> bright blue or anything like that? They have a say in everything. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and front fences are very um, I was going to ask about controversial. Oh, is that right? Um, Why is that? Ah, oh, because they've got so many rules, and they um, you've got to have sight lines coming out of your garage. Um, mm. So you've got you can't have pillars that are too big because that'll block you looking down the footpath to make sure there's no kids coming and right. all those things. Um, the infill. Most of our drawings, we just don't put infill on the drawings because then you've got to design it for them. And, you know, people are designing a house. They mm. haven't even thought about the colour of the house yet and we're designing infill that's going to go on the front. It's just way too far down the track mm. for them to be thinking about what kind of infill they're going to have in their fence. Mm. But if you draw it on the plans, you've got to design it and tell okay. them what it is. And yeah. you think, okay, it's just too hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just... Um, yeah, and a lot of shires have colour restrictions as well. Um, Vic Park is one of them. Do they? Um, really? Yeah, Vic Park is. Uh, Vic Park is leaning off a little bit. Um, but, I mean, you see some some areas, and we all know about the bright blue house on um, 
on West Coast Highway from mm. years and years ago. Yeah. Um, how well, was there was one in Fremantle too that we built oh, just right. down the road yeah. for it and he'd graffitied the whole thing because he'd had a fight with the Shire yeah. and someone in front of him built above the height restrictions. I do remember in that. In his <laughs> view. Very um, well. I'm not, I don't know if it was right or wrong. <laughs> no. We were building at the end of the laneway and you come down the laneway and there's this house and it was just totally graffitied and it was all here. Shires are horrible and Shires do this wrong oh, and shy And you God. think, oh, my goodness, how – you know, but not many people would deface their property just to prove a no, point. No, I was going <laughs> to say that. So he's built a very nice house and then defaced it just be to, it, by way of protest. Yeah. But do they do they really um, have a lot of say? Oh, yes. They too do? much, too much. Yeah. They're, and they're, they interpret the rules how they want to interpret them. Mm. So there's no hard and fast. They've got this thing, bulk and scale. Mm. Now, if I say to you, we're talking about a house and it's bulk and scale, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I was just trying neither to, do they. Re- <laughs> no, I was just trying to work it out in my head. I couldn't <laughs> bulk and scale. Okay. Bulk and scale. So if they don't like something, bulk and scale, and you think, what does that mean? Um, it doesn't really mean anything except that they don't like it, so you, they're going to make you do something. That's, <laughs> that's different. That's different. Um, Goodness me, that's uh, extraordinary. Yeah. Th- like so, lots of shire, you know, the, mm. lots of shires we've got. So, I was actually for amalgamation because at least we got oh yeah <laughs> less big, people big to areas. try and work out how they thought. Uh, big areas <laughs> and only one shire to deal with. Yeah, um, yeah, and f- we've got one at the moment in Netherlands that um, didn't need planning approval for the house. So we could build the house without planning approval, but we did need planning approval for the front fence. <laughs> and you think, okay, go figure. <laughs> Goodness me. That's extraordinary. Extraordinary. Yeah. And then because we didn't need planning approval for the house, but we did need planning approval for the fence, the house that's there now is different to the house that's going to be there. So then they go, but how do we know they're going to build that house? <laughs> Goodness well, me. because they've spent thousands of dollars on drawing plans and I'm sure they didn't do it just to trick you into thinking they were going to do something. Yeah. And That's bizarre, isn't it? Designed a fence <laughs> that if they wanted just to do the fence and keep the house that was there, they could have just designed the fence. And mm. <laughs> That's strange, isn't yeah. it? So um, – once again, I, I guess that um, as part of this process, the an interior designer would start to get involved in that if you wanted them to. If you wanted them to, um, yeah, the colour of the fence and the infill on the fence, even the style of the fence. Um, mm. if the, yeah. I find that really uh, they seem to be running interference, don't they, with, with these sorts of things because uh, it takes away a lot of your choices and providing that they are reasonable choices and you don't paint it a bright blue like the one on Scarborough Beach Road, you should be allowed to choose, shouldn't you? Yeah, not many people would deface their, their own property. No, no, of course not. To, to Just to get up the Shire's nose. I mm. mean, there's not that many people that would do that. Um, so most people are doing what they're doing, designing houses with the best intent. So they should be working with the people to get it. Mm. Um, a lot of councillors get on councils just because they don't like development, so they get on there with their own preconceived ideas of what should be happening mm. in the area. So they're there to push their barrow. They're not there for the general public at all. Mm. Um, those sorts of councillors need, need to be weeded out with mm. um with their voting rights, mm. um, if they're there just to push their own barrow, they're they're in there for the wrong reasons. Wouldn't you um, think that councillors would be looking to help people by finding reasons for a project as as opposed to finding reasons against a project? And I'm talking yeah. about not only houses but other developments as well. No, they most of them are there. Um, uh, the shires are strange things. I don't know how they work. I don't know how they think. I'm not sure um, that many do. Jay. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It's they just are a law unto themselves, and they have the ultimate power. Mm. The one we've got in at Cambridge at the moment, um, she come back with every rule. This this is not in the rules. This is not in the rules, and like four pages of things. And we're building on a triangle block. Mm. 
on a three metre slope from front to back. Goodness me. So it's not easy. It's a corner with a roundabout on it. It's got a freeway that flies over the top of it. There is not, Mm. there's nothing that we don't have on this block. Mm -hmm. And, um, and triangle blocks, sometimes the rules just, um, Mm. just don't work. They don't work. And, um, yeah, she said, no, you do everything I say or that's it. Goodness me. Yes, end of story. And you go, a bit of an ultimatum there. But, you know, surely we should be able to negotiate this. Yes, this isn't four metres, but this one's six metres. So we actually end up with the same area. Mm. It's just not in the same shape as Mm. you would like it Mm. because it's a triangle block. Mm. But she she couldn't see that. Mm. They want us to put a driveway on a slope, on the slope. And you think, why would we put the driveway on a slope? when it's going to have runoff and rain running down and erosion and all those things that you've got to deal with, when if we put it on the other side, it's going to be flat. Mm. Why would you encourage problems? <laughs> and, yes, we can work around it, but why would we want to? Mm. And why? cost more money and all sorts of things. Yeah. Because yeah, we don't like it like that. So yeah. <laughs> you think, okay. And yet there are some areas where shires don't have – uh, as I understand it, you, you may correct me on this, but my uh, some years ago um, um, a development took place next to my mother's house and um, they ran out of money basically and the whole thing stopped and they just it just ran ran like sat like that for years and years and years and th- when we approached the shire they said we can't do anything about that. We don't. They don't nominate a completion date. They don't, uh, and we have no control over whether they leave it the way it is or whether they don't. You actually, you have to um, finish it, and you have to have current permits for it. So, if you um, if you don't complete it, you should be going back for new permits mm. all the time. Um, there is one in Carlisle next door to my friend's house, and that's been going on for about. 15 years, I think I walked through it when my daughter started school. Oh, my school. God, 15 years. He's Yeah, and, I mean, the man, obviously, um, he's not an easy person to deal with mm. <laughs> because otherwise it wouldn't have been going on that long. But, mm. um, yeah, and, yeah, there's nothing you can do if you get somebody that's like that. Um, the Shire would be the only one that could do anything and most of the time it's too hard because the people that the type of people that would do that yeah you can't deal with them anyhow so um, um the other thing that was that concerned us about this particular one was we did they didn't put safety fences around it so when uh uh the grandchildren were going there you know, the, there was a it was a building site, and there was all sorts of hazards in there, as obviously yeah. you would know. And we felt that the the shire concerned should have been able to say, "Look, this is a building site. Um, you are liable if anything goes wrong, and we'd like to see fences around it." Yeah, but they said they can't do that either. We yeah, no, we don't have to fence them. Is that right? No, no, um, and yeah. It, it it would be a cost that would be borne by the owner if we did fence them, mm. um, and they create problems. They blow over, um, mm. you know. So you, if you lock them, then someone's got to have a key to unlock them, and then you've got trades going there that can't yeah, get in, yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all sorts of problems mm. with them. So most of them we don't mm. fence them. Um, I mean, if it's just a normal building, you're mm. fine. We'll yeah. put up with that, but when it goes on for years, it years, just yeah. Um, well, becomes, uh, in that case, if no one's got any money, they're not going to put things. No, up I, it I costs guess not. Money. But I mean, it yeah. invites all sorts of antisocial behaviour as well, doesn't it? When something like that goes for so long, I mean, I noticed the one down in Mosman Park from the was that the Oswalds? Oswalds? Yeah. Uh, that's defaced and graffitied, and it looks an absolute nightmare. I think they're nightmare. going to knock that down. Are now. they? I, th- I heard they were going to, but I know they're back in town again now, so I don't know if it still will get knocked yeah. down. There's one on the coast up in um, where we're building a mainsail drive as well, Notion Reef, and that's sat there. It's still got scaffolding around it, and the scaffolding's going rusty. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the deal is because you wouldn't, yeah. if it's of. Someone's paying for the scaffolding, or or the owner owns the scaffolding. I don't know, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's all and those metal that's rusting now that 
has been yeah. out in the weather that shouldn't have been in the weather and yeah you think oh, i don't know what's but and it's sat there for years like that and it's those sort of things that shires should be able to have some sort of sway over don't you think because really it's all very well um arguing the toss about the color of a fence but at the end of the day um the sorts of yeah. things where it's almost derelict, isn't it? And it invites antisocial behaviour and all sorts of other really nasty things in a in what was otherwise a well developed um, subdivision. Yeah, I, yeah, you just you you just don't know what happens. So what? Why is it? You know, mm. divorces and things like that. Yeah, people split up and argue about things for years. So it could sit there for years if, if it's a nasty divorce, but I suppose. If, and, but and, if, <laughs> and if you were living in the area, it'd be very dispiriting mm. seeing that sort of thing as a be, be a bit of an eyesore. And I yeah. and I looked at that thing in Mosman Park, and I thought, goodness me, if I owned a property here worth what they are, oh yeah, I'd no, be absolutely livid heard, about it. I heard they were going to demolish it and subdivide it again. So it was. Mm. Nine blocks, and they amalgamated them, and now is that nine blocks? Was it? I, th- I think it's nine blocks, and yeah. yeah. So I heard that it was going to be knocked down. And they're going to resubdivide it. So, mm. um, so really, the only winner was the government. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so. wonder how often that happens. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know because I'm not in, I'm not don't talk to anyone in that shire. But yeah, supposedly yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and of course, shires are, can be a help, or they can be a hindrance. Most of the time, they are a hindrance, aren't they? They are a hindrance most of the time. Mm. Um, I, yeah, and I don't know why they would want to be a hindrance. Mm. Um, they're supposed to be there to represent their ratepayers and work for their ratepayers, but mm. they seem to see it as a, uh, as. as they're, they've got know, to be seen oppositional to, to everything. They've, they've got to be seen to be doing something to earn their uh, their salaries, don't they? <sighs> yeah, um, but they don't like working either. Mm. Um, they should have time frames that they have to work to. Mm. Um, and if if they don't work to them, then it's automatically approved. That mm. way, they would. Work. <laughs> well, yes. After it's approved, then there's yeah. no going back, is yeah. there? So yeah. It's, yeah, shires are very hard. Um, mm. And we try to tell our clients when they come in, you say, you know, we're going to go to shire and they're hard to deal with. And, you know, and people have no idea until you actually get into the process how hard it is mm. because mm. they just... Do you have anybody in particular that you use within your organisation that deals and negotiates with shires or is that something that you do um i do most of it do you um well you're remarkably sane (laughs) (laughs) um it depends depends what's happening Mm. um my receptionist she's very bright and bubbly and laughs and jokes and so if i want something uh you know she might ring up but if I'm going to get angry, I'll ring up. So I, yeah. you know, that's yeah. just you know, Gay does the the good bits to try and yes. try and smooth the water. But I'll I'll do the nasty bits. It is really be. disappointing, isn't it, that you have to go to those lengths, really, when you're trying to do business and and uh, and work for someone. I, I, it's a lot of it. I think is just resentment, resentment that people are doing things for themselves, mm. resenting the fact that people are getting on and doing it. I had one in South Perth and they actually went to my client and this was two counsellors. Mm-hmm. Um, they organised a meeting with my client and I said, oh, <laughs> Kerry, if they're having a meeting with you, I'm coming too. Because mm, yeah. Kerry was very meek and mild. She didn't say a lot. Um, so I went to the meeting and they tried to get her to argue against her own development and you think, are you people for <laughs> real? <laughs> and you think... Do you not get that? I'm not some rich builder that's just trying to push this lady around. She's come to me and asked me to do this for her. Yeah. And they're trying to get her to argue against it. And you think, (laughs) what page are you on? What what planet do you live on? (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's ridiculous too. Because, I mean, look, at the end of the day, it. Any cost that you incur as a builder in doing all of this gets passed on to the client, doesn't yeah, it? I yeah. mean, you, you're not a charity. You're yeah. there to make some money. Yeah. And, and they're, they're not um, 
inconveniencing you to the extent that uh, they are the, uh, the the owner. Yeah, we the, yeah. because we're small, we do a lot of things for nothing, and mm. we do. Um, like I'm going to a council meeting tonight. I'm supposed to be flying out at midnight, and they've just sprung this council meeting on me at with two days' notice, um, and I've got to go mm. because. We're small. I can't afford to pay somebody to go in my face. I'd have place. I'd have to get a town planner to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got to go myself. But I haven't made any money on this project. If this project doesn't go ahead, mm. yeah. all my time, all my plans, everything I've printed off, is all been for love because um, because that's you can, just there's the no way, way it is. You, you, there's no way you can recoup your costs. No, no. So. But they don't have a lot of um, information about what they're doing to other people that doesn't seem to care. Mm. You know, you so say my client now spent $100,000 on this block, plus his block, mm. to get to the stage we're at. Mm. They don't care. No, they they don't. really don't care. Mm. Oh, well, who cares? Mm. Uh, we're going to this meeting and I said it gets refused. It's cost my client eight thousand dollars, and the councillor goes, "Oh, we're all big people. That could happen." And you think, "How really? dare you be so flippant about somebody else's eight thousand dollars? How dare you?" <laughs> no, that's just outrageous, isn't it? It yeah. really is. Yeah. And little wonder councils come in for so much ridicule and uh, and resentment. You know, you look at when you get your rates bill and let's face it, they're not that many months away, you you wonder, what have they done for me? Oh, yeah, they, uh, yeah, they are shocking. And, yeah, there but, doesn't seem to be any answer except no. the politicians need to take control and start making them do some. The Minister for Local Government, I've tried to ring him a few times and you can't even speak to him. Yeah, it's put it in writing and you think, God, if I had time to put everything in writing that I needed to put in writing to him, I'd spend all my time sending him letters, and not <laughs> doing right. any work. Just for him to ignore. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jay, just a moment ago you mentioned you were flying out tonight and, of course, you're off to um, the uh, lovely resort of Hamilton Island. I am. Tell us a bit about why you're going. We're going to the Australian Housing Awards. <laughs> You're excited, aren't you? I am, I am. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we fly into Sydney tomorrow morning at uh -huh. 6 and then out again at 10 and we're on Hamilton Island by lunchtime tomorrow. Oh, look, that's just outstanding. Yeah, it is. And um, we're there for four days. We've got a conference and then the awards on the Saturday night. So mm. A little bit of time to wiggle the toes in the sand, do you think? Oh, yeah, <laughs> a bit of time. <laughs> We try. We we actually tried to book a sunset cruise like on Wednesday night, and they go, "We don't do it on Wednesday night." And you think, "Oh no, the only <laughs> night we're there, and they don't do yeah. it." <laughs> so it's an award, and you've won this one previously, have you not? No, not this no, this is one? a different one. No, this, different one? this is um, this is business partner of the year, okay. Australian business partner of the year, um, that I'm up for. Yep. Um, so yeah, no. Well, look, I'm. I really do hope that you. It's a successful trip for you, and that you do do well. Uh, as, Thank as you. I'm sure you will. Oh. Um, Deborah and Homes of Distinction are an amazing company, and they build some beautiful oh. homes. So this is three years in a row we've been at the Australian Housing Awards. So that's not bad for a small company. Not bad at all. Yeah. I'd say it's outstanding, mm. really. Yeah. So um, and. Um, you are obviously um, had people knocking down your door to go with you. <laughs> no, no, strangely <laughs> enough, my husband said no, I couldn't think anything worse. <laughs> Goodness me. My Did daughter you? said no, my, my, friend's, my friend's birthday's that day, I'm not going. <laughs> Goodness me. I've never heard of anybody having so much trouble to get somebody <laughs> to go to an outstanding resort uh, and have a have a lovely meal. Yeah, that's, well, that's quite yeah. remarkable. My receptionist, she said she'd go. Well, she seems to be <laughs> one of the only the only one with any sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, she, and so, oh, geez, you'd be employer of the year anyway, wouldn't you, if oh, you were taking yeah, her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic, Jay. Well, look, all from the Sattler Files and everybody here, we wish you the best of luck in the in the awards, and yeah. we look forward to you bringing back the. Uh, the statuette and showing us when you uh, when you join us again soon. No problem. Thanks, Murray. Thanks very much, Jay. And uh, more on the Sattler Files very shortly. This is Sattler Files. 
DevRite Homes when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At DevRite Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about DevRite Homes at www.devrite.com.au. This is the Sattler Five. This is.